very grateful for uh, your participation. The chair now recognizes the chairman of the subcommittee on early childhood, elementary, and secondary education, the gentleman from Indiana, Mr. Rokita, for any statement you may have. Well, thank you, Chairman Meehan. Uh, good morning and welcome. Let me begin by, by thanking you, Chairman, uh, for approaching me and my committee members about the idea for this morning's hearing. I am pleased that our two subcommittee teams came together uh, for this important and relatively uh, new issue. So again, thank you for your leadership. Uh, collabor collabor uh, collaboration across committees um, is very important, and I hope not only these two committees, but others are able to do more of it. Uh, as we draw from the knowledge and expertise of our House colleagues, I believe we become more effective policymakers. So I look forward, number one, from hearing from our witnesses and having an informative discussion. We are dealing with an issue today that is both critically important and exceptionally complex. So first, why is it so important? As we fight for all Americans looking to build better lives for themselves and their families, we know that a cornerstone of that is a quality education. It's the root of a better life. With very few exceptions, a worker will not succeed in the workforce if they failed as a student in the classroom. A strong education system is essential to a strong and exceptional America. And that is why we should engage innovative solutions to raise achievement and embrace new technologies that allow us to teach children in more effective ways. We all can see how acquiring data on student performance can revolutionize student learning. For starters, data can provide an early warning to teachers, alerting them uh, to students who are falling behind and need that extra help. It can also awaken parents to the challenges their child is facing so they can step in with additional support at home. And additionally, data on student achievement can equip local communities with the information needed to hold their schools accountable, as well as enable schools to share information on what's working in their classrooms, and sometimes even more importantly, what's not working. So on to the next question. Why is this so complex? Well, I think we've learned by now that modern technology is anything uh, but a simple concept. The science and ingenuity behind each new smartphone, app, computer, or piece of software is tough to comprehend, yet these products have become an integral part of our everyday lives. And even though we surely got along before them, still it's hard to imagine what our daily lives would be like if we never heard the names such as Google, Apple, Microsoft, Facebook, and Amazon. With each new technology comes risk and responsibility. That is certainly the case when it comes to the technology we bring into our schools and the data we collect on our students. Protecting student privacy is a shared responsibility. Parents have to be informed and engaged about what technologies and practices are used in their schools and what data is actually collected on their children. Who has access to that data and the safeguards in place to protect their children's privacy? And what is the role of the local school board, local school leaders, and staff? Should state and local education leaders have to ensure they are limiting the data collected to only information truly needed to improve classroom instruction? And who gets to define what truly needed means? Should access to student data be limited to only individuals who are working with schools to improve classroom instruction? Should there be strict security protocols in place while ensuring parents are fully informed about the data uh, use policies of the particular school or district? And then there are the technology providers who I s expect would agree have an equally important role in protecting student privacy and securing student data to which they have access. These companies must remain vigilant and remember that students are in the classroom first and foremost to learn. Finally, there is also a role for federal policymakers uh, that is constitutionally based. For example, for 40 years, the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act that Chairman Meehan mentioned has been in place to protect uh, the privacy of student education records. I look forward to discussing with our witnesses, witnesses today whether that law is up to uh, the challenges uh, or, that we face today or whether changes need to be made so that the law better reflects the realities of modern technology, also as Chairman Meehan alluded to. Or is it simply a matter of all the stakeholders self-policing? I am fighting for all people so that they can build better lives for themselves and their families. Strengthening education is a goal we all share, and one the Education and Workforce Committee has spent a great deal of time working on. And as I noted earlier, uh, the, ga uh, the gathering and sharing of student data can improve achievement, but let's make sure we are doing it in a way that 
doesn't have unintended consequences like losing student privacy. Chairman Meehan, again, thank you for your leadership and your help with this joint hearing.